hello friends welcome back to the channel i hope you are studying well so the topic today which we'll be discussing is benign mucous membrane paphicoid this is very brief exam oriented synopsis i'll try to cover maximum things which may be asked in the mcqs let's get started so this is a disease which is formed which is found in pamphigoid disorders and what are pamphigoid disorders these are sub epithelial vesiculobullous disorders of autoimmune origin so what does this mean this means that the vesiculobullous disorder vesicles and bullae they are seen in this and it is sub epithelial presentation is there and it is of autoimmune origin some antibodies they'll be involved we'll be discussing it so how does the disease present itself it presents as mucous membrane bullae are formed so bullae are formed on the mucous membrane which then rupture and heal with scar formation so the bullae is there mucous membrane is involved there which then rupture and whenever it heals it heals with the scar formation so the scar formation is important thing in this as in any other as in most of the autoimmune diseases females they are more commonly affected and more than 60 years of age is there so what is pathophysiology the autoantibodies they are formed against the components of the basement membrane so the basement membrane components they are attacked by the antibodies autoantibodies which leads to subepithelial clefting i hope i'm clear till now what are the symptoms symptoms may be clinical clinically most of the mucus most commonly mucus membranes they are involved and skin is rarely affected in contrast to the pamphigus we know okay so uh, the oral manifestations it includes as we talked earlier bully and vesicle rupture they are formed they rupture and they form extensive painful also and another thing is discomative gingivitis these two are the oral manifestations and these are very important and need to be remembered okay then is ocular manifestations so ocular manifestation is another thing associated in this disease almost 25% of the patients they have they have the ocular symptoms um and uh there is a range of involvement of ocular things like conjunctivitis and erosions which may lead to subconjunctival scarring or there may be xerophthalmia or cornea it produces the keratin as a protective layer and leads to keratoconjunctivitis or simbliferon may occur and it is very important to treat and refer to ophthalmology because if untreated it may lead to blindness complete blindness so this is very important uh, thing to know as a gtp as well other manifestations is all the it, it relates to all the mucous membranes genital nasal esophageal and pharyngeal tissues and skin lesions similar to those of oral cavity they may be seen in any of the mucous membranes so another important thing is laryngeal involvement can be serious with airway obstruction from the large bully so if the if larynx is involved then it needs immediate treatment okay how do we investigate it one is biopsy okay biopsy of intact bully and normal tissue we know we take both the diseased and normal tissue in biopsy next is hne staining of the blister and it shows subepithelial clefting direct immunofluorescence direct immunofluorescence of normal tissue it shows linear igg and c3 deposits at basement membrane zone so this is important it's linear igg and c3 is there and indirect immunofluorescence it's really positive in almost 5% of the cases it's really positive all right then is treatment options so this is a chronic disease and it requires continuous treatment strategy means patient comes and goes takes the treatment and goes away it's not like that there should be a continuous treatment strategy okay and the treatment it includes topical corticosteroids it depends on the condition of the patient varies from the topical steroids dapsin methotrexate topical immunomodulators and it may you may have to depending on the symptoms you may need to give systemic steroids with or without azathioprine or other immunomodulators all right ocular treatment all the patients who are having oral symptoms they need to be referred to ophthalmology for the review and regular ophthalmology reviews should be done even if no clinically obvious lesion is there in the eye but it's very important <laughs> 